September 12, 2023, Proverbs, Psalms 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a cloak, stretching out heaven like a tent curtain. The one who lays the beams of his upright chambers in the waters, he makes the clouds his chariot. He walks upon the wings of the wind. He makes his angels his messengers, spirits his messengers, the winds his messengers. His, ministri his ministers flames of fire, flaming fire his ministries. He established the earth upon its foundation so that it will not move out of place, totter forever and ever. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters were standing above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, they hurried away. The mountains rose. The valley sank down to the place which you established for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass over so that they will not return to cover the earth. He sends forth springs in the valleys. They flow between the mountains. They drink. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them, the birds of the heavens dwell. They lift up their voices among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of his works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the labor of man, so that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine which makes man's heart glad, so that he may make his face glisten with oil and food which sustains man's heart. The trees of the Lord drink their fill, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted where the birds build their nest, and the stork whose home is the fire, fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats, the cliffs are a refuge for the seraphim. He made the moon for the seasons, the sun knows the place of its setting. You appoint darkness and it becomes night, in which all the beasts of the forest prowl about. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. Man goes forth to his work and do his labor until evening. O oh Lord, how many are your works? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions, of your creatures. There is the sea, great and broad, in which are swarms without number, animals both small and great. There the ships move along, and Leviathan, and a sea monster, which you have formed to sport in it. They all wait for you to give them their food in due season, in its appointed time. You gave to them, they gave, gather it up. You open your hand, they are satisfied with good. You hide your face, they are dismayed. You take away their spirit, their breath, they are created. You send forth, they expire and return to dust. You send forth your breath, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. Let the glory of the Lord endure forever. Let the Lord be glad in his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Let my meditation be pleasing to him. As for me, I shall be glad in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 12. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. A good man will obtain favor from the Lord, but he will condemn a man who despises evil. A man will not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous will not be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who shames him is like rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are just, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. A man will be praised according to his insight, but one of perverse mind will be despised. Better is he who is lightly esteemed and has a servant than he who honors himself and lacks bread. A righteous man has regard for the life of his animal, but when even the compassion of the wicked is cruel. He who tills his land will have plenty of bread, but he who pursues worthless things lacks sense. The wicked man deserve, desires the booty of evil men, but the root of the righteous yields fruit. 
An evil man is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will escape from trouble. A man will be satisfied with God, with good, by the fruit of his words. And the deeds of a man's hands will return to him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. Fool's anger is known at once, but a prudent man conceals dishonor. He who speaks truth tells what is right, but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No harm befalls the righteous, but the wicked are filled with trouble. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims folly. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the slack hand will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. The righteous is a guide to his neighbor, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. A lazy man does not roast his prey, but the precious possession of a man is diligence. The way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. Acts 13, another were at Antioch, in the church that was there, prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Simon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manaen, who have been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, when they have fasted and prayed and laid, the hand, laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they reached Salamis, they began to proclaim the word of God in synagogues of the Jews, and they also had John as their helper. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they found a magician, a Jewish prophet, a Jewish false prophet whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the Proconsul Sergius Palamus, Pallas, a man of intelligence. This man summoned Barnabas and saw and sought to hear the word of God, but Elymas the magician, for so his name is translated, was opposing them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, fixed his gaze on him and said, You are full of all deceit and fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness will not cease to make crooked the straight ways of the Lord. Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and not see the sun for a time. And immediately a mist and a darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking those who would lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had happened, being amazed at the teaching of the Lord. Now Paul and his companions put out to the sea from Paphos and came to Perga, Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But going on from Perga, they arrived at Pisidian Antioch. And on the Sabbath day, they went to the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent to them, saying, Brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say it. Paul stood up and motioning with his hand said, Men of Israel and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, he led them out from it. For a period of about forty years, he put up with them in the wilderness. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land as an inheritance, all of which took about four hundred and fifty years. After these things, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for forty years. After he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, concerning whom he also testified and said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. From the descendants of the man, according to promise, God has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. 
and John had proclaimed before him coming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And while John was completing his course, he kept for saying, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he, but behold, one is coming after me whose sandals of those whose feet I am, unworthy, I, I am not worthy to untie. Brethren, sons of Abraham's family, and those among you who fear God to us, the message of this salvation has been sent. For those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, recognizing neither him nor the utterances of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, fulfilled these by condemning him. And though they found no ground for putting him to death, they asked Pilate that he be executed. When they had carried out all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the cross and had laid him in the tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, the very ones who are now his witnesses to the people, and we preach to you the good news of the promise made to the fathers, that God has fulfilled his promise to our children, and that he raised us up, Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As for the fact that he raised him up from the dead, no longer to return to decay, he has spoken in this way, I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Therefore, he also says in another psalm, You will not allow your Holy One to undergo decay. For God, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid among his fathers, and underwent decay. But he whom God raised did not undergo good decay. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that, though, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and through him everyone who believes is freed from all things, from which you could not be freed through the law of Moses. Therefore take heed, so that the things spoken of in the prophets may not come upon you. Behold, you scoffers, and marvel, and perish. For I am accomplishing a work in, which, in your days, at which you will never believe, though someone should describe it to you. As Paul and Barnabas were going out, the people kept begging that these things might be spoken to them the next Sabbath. Now when the meeting of the synagogue had broken up, many of the Jews and the, of the God-fearing proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, were undergoing them, were urging them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, nearly the whole city assembled to her the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began contradicting the things spoken by Paul and were blaspheming. Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, since you repudiated and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning it to the Gentiles, for so the Lord has commanded us. I have placed you as a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring forth salvation to the end of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed, and the word of the Lord was being spread through the whole region. But the Jews incited the devout women of prominence and the leading men of the city and instigated a persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and drove them out of the city, of the district. But they shook off the dust of their feet in protest against them, and went to Iconium. And the disciples were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit.